child. Now, Miss Candy Girl, Miss Candy Girl, she out here spilling the tea on Real Housewives of Potomac season eight. I know that we are all awaiting the show to come back. I know that we are all anxious, ready, especially after the brawl that went down a couple of weeks ago. We ready to figure out, okay, what exactly happened that led up to it and what alls is going on in the season. And Candace just dropped up huge, a huge boatload of tea that I think that we ain't got no choice but to get into and talk about. So let's let's talk about it. want people to have fun let's kick back let's get into a little tea let's not get too crazy but let's enjoy the sip what's up y'all so some of y'all know me from doing story times some of y'all know me from my commentary and others of y'all know me from my spiritual tarot readings now nonetheless i have a patreon that i want y'all to go check out because every video that i upload to youtube is automatically flagged by the algorithm not to mention the fact that I'm black and LGBT, but that's a commentary video for another day, child. Okay? So over on Patreon.com slash Scott Santana, I want to be able to offer y'all early uploads, extended versions of videos, story times, both old and new, as well as exclusive content. Because best believe that there is a lot of tea I be wanting to get into, but I would like to keep my channel. Okay? And I'm going to leave it at that. So do me a favor and go sub to my Patreon. Now also, for those that don't know, I am psychic. I'm an intuitive healer, a light worker, as some would call it, baby, I'm gifted, okay? I used to run a channel called Alana Souls for a few years where I would put out intuitive messages, predictions, zodiac readings, but now I'm starting to transfer all of that content over to this channel and merge those entertainment and spiritual worlds. So I did wanna inform y'all that I do offer personal alignment readings featuring tarot, astrology, and other divination tools. And you know, once in a blue, y'all can catch me on live, we could get a quick and done as well. Now, if you're stressed out, confused in your life direction, unsure about your love life, career, money, going through your Saturn return, even if you got a fake friend of you, I can help you. I consider my alignment sessions to be spiritual therapy. Let's break you down to help build you back up, okay? Let's figure out who you are and where you come from to understand where it is that you're going. How many times in life do we get to a certain age or past a certain obstacle point wish that we would have known X, Y, Z ahead of time? Well, now you can so if y'all don't go book a reading with me on my website, thealignedsouls.com, and allow me to whip that butt back into shape and align you back to your highest good and highest soul, baby. I love you all for real now. And they see boo. But let's get to the chi-chi, the kiki, the, the internet bull. What's going on, y'all? It's Scott Santana, aka Cha 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 Chi Chi. And we are back for another Let's Talk About It because we are talking about it, girl. Okay, now listen, like I said in the intro, Candace has gone and dropped a huge, a huge, 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 huge bombshell about the upcoming season of Real Housewives of Potomac season eight. And it's got me a little, I ain't gonna lie, y'all, it's got me a little nervous. Okay, but before we go in, go ahead and get into all of that, y'all already know, go ahead and thumbs this video up so other, other people can see it and join the channel. Come on now. Okay, y'all, so let's go ahead and get into this tea that has dropped, okay? I was just scrolling on Twitter, minding my business. I came across this interview because I do follow, you know, some of the Housewives blogs. Um, Jay's reality blog is one of my favorite blogs. They cover, you know, all the reality TV, so shout out to them. And I did come across this clip that they posted 
And, you know, as I'm listening to it, because mind you, I woke up this morning with Candace on the brain. Okay. I woke up this morning with Candy Girl on the brain because I have a very special relationship with Candy. Okay. Personally, I feel like that is my best friend in my head. Okay. For just, listen, we are so much alike. Okay. And, um, yeah, I was supposed to do a reading for her like two years ago, but I never got around to doing it. One day I'm going to do it. One day I'm going to do it. Okay. But I've been telling her like, bitch, get your ass over here to New York City. So that you can perform and you can see me. The fuck? And child, she finally listened. Okay, because tell me why she got a show on Monday in New York. And I ain't even I ain't even realized. So now listen, I'm listen, I'm gonna need y'all to come get a personal reading, baby. Okay, go get you a personal reading. If you see me on live, come get a quickie reading, girl, because I'm trying to show up and show out. I'm trying to pull up on Miss Candace Dillard at her show on Monday. Okay. But aside from that, I saw this clip. And she went into detail, you know, kind of talking about season eight and what to expect. And like, I keep teasing, like, it's something that she said that really made me like, okay, now, girl. Okay, now, girl. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it because, okay, now, girl. Okay, now, girl. How did it feel this time around? Like, has anything changed with you? Does it still feel the same? Season eight is different. Okay. It is, there's a clear divide. Um, this season that I think we've not experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll kind of see us work through the division. Um, and I don't want to spoil it, yeah. but you know, how we get through it, if we get through it, <laughs> um, you, you see a lot of, I saw a lot of different sides of people this season. Um, people surprised me in the worst way. <laughs> Okay, and that's just where I'm gonna stop it right there because we're gonna we're gonna keep it going and discuss the whole club, of course. But because listen, there's so much more that she said that we gotta get into. But before we get there, at this point, I was already rolling my eyes when I heard her say, um, you know, when I heard her speaking about, you know, like, oh, okay, well, this season, you know, was different people, and you know, I don't really know. Um, basically, she was, you know, explaining that this season people showed their true colors and she was surprised and this is this is a problem that i be having with candy girl which is another reason why i gotta pull up on her okay because i need to i need to talk to her in person okay maybe you know because i'm 5 11 and she like five so maybe when we dominating over over her okay towering over her maybe she'll get it through her head but candy girl I've been telling your ass for years, these bitches are not your friends so i'm not understanding which one of these motherfuckers within the cast has shown you differently than what the fans have been fucking telling you and what I've been fucking saying. None of these bitches are your friends, okay? None of them. Let's go ahead and bring the cast picture up, okay? The cast picture up, because we can really call this the real housewives of, of fake land, okay? A fantasy land, okay? A fake friendship land, okay? Because none of these bitches are your friends. Let's, let's, let's go down the line. Okay, Mia's first season, y'all was going at it. Okay, y'all had the whole little salad toss fight. Okay, and then last season when it came to Chris and the rumors, she blatantly sat there and lied and joined in on the rumors. Okay, even though y'all y'all have y'all moments where y'all kind of respect each other and kind of like, okay, we just doing it for the show, whatever. Like, she still don't like you. Giselle has never fucking liked you. Has never fucking liked you at all. And that much was made very clear. As soon as Monique got her ass up off the show, what did she do? She came after you and your husband and made up all of those rumors and whatnot last year. So you can't be shocked by those two. Karen. Karen has blatantly lied on you, purposely took Monique's side. She sat and watched Monique come after you episode after episode after episode in season five and still took that bitch's side. Still took Hazel's side. And the problem that I had, okay, that a lot of y'all dumbass fans don't seem to get is that it's totally okay for somebody to be neutral. But Karen wasn't neutral. Here's the difference with people that try to play the whole neutral thing. You say you want to be neutral. You say you want to be in the middle. You say you want to, like, just, like, okay, I'm taking care of both of y'all. But that's not what it was. At no point did we see Karen consoling Candace in a way that she should have been. All of that energy went towards Monique, who was the aggressor the entire time. Look at how y'all are sitting here going off about how, you know, Tory deserves all the time that he got for shooting at Meg. Not shooting Meg, but shooting at Meg, right? Now, imagine if the world was rallying behind Tory right now and consoling Tory when they really should be con consoling the person who got shot at. 
y'all already know that Twitter would have a filled fucking day. Twitter is having a filled day right now. All you hear is protect black women and y'all really must hate black women. And oh my God, as a dark black woman in America, da, 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 da. like y'all are already saying that now just at the simple fact that people are defending Tory Lanez. Uh, uh, not even so much of defending him, but just saying that, okay, 10 years is excessive. Y'all are already going in based off of that. So let the whole world rally around somebody who actually committed a crime, committed a fucking heinous act and violated somebody else's personal space y'all would really have a fucking field day even more. So I don't understand this whole thing with, oh, Karen is friends to both of them. Oh, da 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 Just say that you really don't like Candace and you felt like she deserved to get dragged. Just say that and keep it moving because at the end of the day, Karen was supposed to be friends with both Monique and Candace, but not once did we see Karen come on camera and like lay it down on Monique as she should have. As she should have. And miss me with the whole, oh, she probably, we don't know what Karen told that girl in private and da 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 Fuck all of that because she fought the bitch on camera. Now, matter of fact, it wasn't even a fight. She attacked Candace on camera. So the conversation should have been on camera of Monique, you did way too fucking much. I'm going to be here as your friend, but also understand I'm going to check in on Candace as well. Like, there's a way to play it, but she played it wrong and she played it dumb. Okay. She completely took up from Monique, didn't really step in and tell Monique how she was wrong. And then we didn't even really see her consoling, uh, Candace, who was the actual victim. So that right there should have shown Candace that that wasn't her friend. And even when she complained and whatnot, we get to the reunion and now we find out all of this information about how can uh how Karen was going behind Candace's back trying to get her fired. Okay? Because y'all like to forget. Y'all like y'all are very forgetful. Y'all like to have selective memory and forget details. But Karen, the same one who hasn't really had a real storyline in years since her parents died, let's wake it up. Let's talk about it. Okay? The same one who has not had a real story line since her parents died, okay? And since her and Ray's marriage was a topic of discussion for that one season, this is the same person who said that she was friends to both Monique and Candace, but went behind Candace's back and tried to get her fired. She took something as simple as Candace telling her to go to hell and tried to make it seem like Candace was sending death threats her way and, like, really, really coming for her. And then she went to production and tried to get her fired from the show. And see, I'm sorry, Candace, because this is where I got to fucking call you out because your dumb ass went back and befriended the bitch. Befriended her. Gave her another chance. Just as you did with Giselle, same as you did with Mia. Okay? And speaking of too many goddamn chances, let, that, that, let's move on to Ashley. Okay? Because Ashley is the real reason why people started hating Candace, if we're going to keep it a buck. Now, there's a whole bunch of people who really just feel uncomfortable seeing Candace be in a space that she's in. She's young. She's beautiful. She's popping. She got money. She you know, has wealth that's been generated from her mother. There's a lot of people that don't like her based off of just how she was raised and who she is, right? But then there's also a lot of other people who felt like, okay, Candace was kind of that girl, but then the whole butter knife scene where she was kicking Ashley out of her home because Ashley was trespassing at that point. Don't give a damn if we film it. Baby, this is my house and I can shut it down at any point. Which Candace tried to. And production kept sending Ashley ass back up in there. To which uh, Candace was, you know, flinging around the butter knife. But it was a butter knife. OK, and so ever since then, we've seen Ashley try and try and try to go after Candace, whether it meant, you know, fueling the Giselle Chris rumors or whether it meant, you know, um, I'm going to do some vindictive shit, act like we friends. I'm going to sit up in your house and smile and kick, 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 giggle with you. But then I'm going to wait until we get into a group dinner scene to try to expose you. Another bit she gave too many fucking chances. Now, Robin, we ain't really know that they, they was even that fucking close until last season. Apparently, they're closer offline than they are, you know, during the show because we ain't never really seen them to be that close. But then last season, you know, when Candace got mad at Robin out of nowhere, we was all like, what the fuck? But apparently, they've been close. So I don't know because Candace, to me, it would seem like, okay, if the girl showed you something different last year and we didn't even know the child was close like that, um, what true colors are coming out this year if she already began to show you last year? I don't know. Now, could it be Wendy? Could it be Wendy? Wendy's the only viable option based off of what Candace said, because everybody else has been like very up in your face about who they are. I don't know if Candace has noticed that Wendy isn't necessarily her friend, but the fans have been saying it. And we know Candace is on social media, and I know she reads our tweets because hello, that's how, to, hello, like that's how me and her had even gotten the contact about me doing a reading for her. Like, come on, come on, Candace knows who I am. That's my best friend. Okay, let's talk about it. 
But I know that Candace is on social media. So there's no way in hell that she hasn't seen everybody and their mama with a logical thinking fucking mind say that Wendy is not truly her friend. Because we see Candace has gone to bat for Wendy several, several times, like time after time, especially when it comes to the Green Eye Bandits. But we've never really seen Wendy do the same for Candace. So that begs me to wonder, like, is this a season where we're finally going to see a crack um, in Candace's and Wendy's relationship? Because that's the only person out of all of these people that I could see, ooh, I, I didn't realize that there was, you know, something there. I didn't realize that this person had this other side. Because Candace loves to give chance after chance, but literally everybody else has had multiple chances. Wendy's the only person where it's like, okay, it would be something brand new for her. I don't know. But let's go ahead and get back into this video. Because I just I just really found that interesting. Um, Damn, and that's sad. Yeah. Just, you think you know folk. And, you know, in, in moments of desperation, what the saints and the ain'ts will do to save themselves. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for it, but I know it's going to be drama. Oh, it's going to be great TV yeah. now. Don't <laughs> get me wrong. Y'all going to be sitting there with your popcorn, with right. your leg kicked up, clutching your pearls. They're going to be rolling on the floor. There's going to be pearls over there, pearls, pearls everywhere. Right. They're not even on the string. They're just, just rolling around in the floor. They're going to be everywhere. Every so, gird your loins. Get ready. Because it, it, it is a great season. Yeah. But And I can say, I can look at it as a viewer and say that. Mm -hmm. But as someone who was, like, in it and was, you know toiling in the trenches and trying to backpedal and front pedal and doggy pedal and not drown okay right. hey, hello um it was a lot it was hard yeah. it was a it was probably my hardest season and i i said this to someone behind the scenes i would take the perils of season five over this season Damn, so that says a lot yes Damn. Now that's fucking crazy, y'all. That's literally crazy. Let me just, let me just, just in case like the visuals kind of like got y'all thrown off. Let me play the last twenty seconds so y'all hear exactly what she said. Cause I, I need y'all to hear it with y'all own ears, but like literally audibly, just listen. Don't even worry about focusing on the screen. Just hear what she said. Doggy pedal and not drown. Okay, right. hey, hello. Um, it was a lot. It was hard. Yeah. It was a. It was probably my hardest season. And I I said this to someone behind the scenes. I would take the perils of season five over this season. Damn, so that says a lot. Yes. Damn. Okay. Now, listen, mind y'all. Candace loves a good wordplay, okay? Like, she is very good with the, with the mouth, okay? But let me go ahead and Google, okay? what perils means right because we don't want to misconstrue because when you're dealing with a wordsmith like candace like somebody who knows what they're talking about and like I, I feel like she well actually i know her chart okay she definitely has like some valuable like mercurial placement okay um like mercury gemini mercury virgo like strong gemini strong uh virgo that's typically those like the people who make the best writers and the best rappers and the people who are very deadly with the mouth typically have strong Gemini placements, strong Virgo placements, or have like a Mercury and like Gemini or Virgo. Now, she mentioned the word perils, right? She was very careful to say like, I would take season five's perils over, you know, what happened this season. And if we Google perils, immediately what comes up is serious and immediate danger or exposed to danger, threatened, Jeopardy, risk, riskiness, hazard, insecurity. Now, even though you could have used, you know, just use context clues. Again, this is Candace. I want to make sure that we are focusing on every word because Candace is a very intentional person and she's quick on her feet. And so if she used the word perils, like she like, yes, yeah, she's she's trying to be tongue in cheek. But at the same time, let's make sure that we're hearing her correctly. And regardless, she's speaking about the dangers of season five. And the dangers of season five was from, you know, Ms. Not For Lazy Moms, a.k.a. Miss Hazel No E. Okay? Miss Hazel No E. The one who, like, have y'all have y'all watched her podcast yet? Have y'all subscribed to her YouTube and her and her binder views? Okay? Because y'all y'all keep saying that the binder views is up there with Phaedra, but why ain't nobody subscribed to her binder story times? And, you know, just because I love a good receipt, 
just because I love a good receipt, because what we're not going to do is get in the comments and team Monique, team Monique, bring Monique back, bring Monique back. No, because y'all just want her back to fight. That's all y'all want her back for. Y'all just want her back so she can fight. Okay, y'all want for Miss Not For Lazy Moms to clock in and not be lazy and get to fighting. And that's what we're not going to do. That's what we're not going to do. Okay, let's see if I can even find it. Okay. Like, did she even delete, like, did she delete her page? Because she, oh, here's her page right here. T with Monique. Oh, not 37,000 followers. Oh, Hazel. Not 37,000 followers, Hazel. Oh, let's, let's take a look at her videos, because y'all all fans of hers, right? Motivation from her survival Bible. Oh, not 2,000 views nine months ago. Wow. Wow. She did a video with Jesse Wu. Hell, Jesse Wu got way more than 479 followers. And it only got less than 500 views? Damn. She did. Wow. And y'all say that Karen Huga is the grand dame. Why ain't nobody watch that video? Okay, why ain't nobody watch this video? Why is it less than 2,000 views? Y'all love Monique so much and Karen Huga is the grand dame. Why y'all ain't watch that? Okay? Why y'all ain't watch the candy video? Because y'all don't give a damn about Monique. Y'all don't give a damn about Monique, okay? And you know how I know y'all don't give a damn? Girl, she did a whole video with DJ Sky. DJ Sky is on YouTube considering him, well, it's it's considered, you know, one of the kings of reality TV, at least when it comes to reviewing commentary on YouTube. Hell, his own followers didn't even come over here, okay? Didn't even come over here to, to help boost it up with the views because y'all don't give a damn. Y'all just want Monique back so she could turn into Street Fighter, Chun Li, and get to kicking ass. Child. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Candace to be one to put 20 on 10. And we've all known Candace to bring up season five and cry and this, that, and a third. And regardless how you feel about that, we can all agree that season five was traumatic for her. Whether or not you feel like it was deserved, it was still a traumatic season for her. And I don't feel like Candace is someone who would bring up or even reference season five and saying that they're having a harder time now than they did then if they didn't truly mean it. I don't. This doesn't feel like a situation like Miss Candy Burris, okay? Miss Candy girl. Because y'all, listen, y'all know how Candy will go go ahead and sit down and do all of these interviews and be like, girl, the season is tea. Oh my God, they clocked in. Everybody come for me. It's a good season. Ooh, wait till y'all see the reunion. Y'all know Candy will hype the fuck up out of some shit. Okay? That's why she earned her check no matter what. She ain't even got to be in the first seat. Okay? What? Y'all heard what Kenya said in the interview that nobody asked for with Carlos King. Girl, clock it. Catch it. Okay? That's why Candy always earned her check because one thing Candy gonna do is promote the fuck out of Bravo in they shows. Okay? She gonna promote the fuck out of Real Housewives of Atlanta even though it's been lackluster the last five years. Okay? But see, when it comes back to Miss Candy Girl, the other Candy. Okay? Miss Candy with a C. I don't think she's lying. I don't. And that troubles me. That makes me a little concerned. Makes me a little sad. Um, also, too, because, listen, again, <laughs> that's that's my best friend in my head. Um, I probably could have warned her, you know, had I done her reading like I was supposed to. I could have been like, bitch, now this season going to be a little, okay? Like, might want to, okay? Um... Maybe I might do that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I might do that, you know, before a premiere, just to, you know, give us some insight for that. Listen, this ain't about me. Listen, this ain't about me. Why don't y'all go book a reading? Okay? Why don't y'all go to dialonisouls.com to book you a personal reading? Okay? But I don't know, y'all. I guess we're going to see. I guess we're going to see. I'm looking forward to it coming back. Um, I know a lot of people looking forward to see how, you know, the girls the girls uh you know get robbing together but girl oh my god y'all are aggravating y'all are fucking aggravating okay i'm just ready to see how the brawl turns out like what happens with that um rumor has it that they stopped filming like two days after which is dumb to me because if you're gonna go back just for drawing some gay kissing scenes y'all could have went back for the aftermath of the fight like the fuck but i mean she's saying that this is the worst season so to me that means the darkest unless she went through because, see, the fact that 
motherfuckers ended up fighting at the end of the season, even though they weren't main cast, that makes me think that this is a darker season in terms of that. But I do want to hope and pray that she's not saying that it's a darker season because she had like a death in the family or like she went through like a miscarriage. Because I know last year I was feeling like she was pregnant or about to be pregnant. So I hope that's not what it is. Because I can I can totally picture this season coming around and then it's revealed that, yeah, she went through like a miscarriage, right? Because she didn't say necessarily that is a dark season for everybody. She just said a dark time for her. So I don't know. But definitely let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below as if, you know, I give a fuck. And definitely make sure that y'all go and y'all stream my music as if you give a fuck. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye bye now. I'm trying to fuck now, so baby, let's do it. Fuck up my baby right here on my list. I'm trying to take it to my.